Well, Happy New Year from the Paw of Manitoba. That's Clearwater Lake. This is Evergreen Resort. The reason I'm in the cabin during daylight is that today was kind of a stock up day on supplies, filled propane. I spent my whole Christmas trying so hard to get a lake trout sight fishing show, which isn't ideal because you got to fish in depths that aren't ideal for lake trout. I got the new AquaView along, I put that underneath, I got some small fish swimming over top of it, but essentially nothing accomplished, so I need to salvage this trip. This video is presented by Travel Manitoba. Clearwater Lake is in the northern region of Manitoba, and tomorrow I'm gonna try a new spot fishing in ideal lake trout depths in 40, 50 feet. See what happens. Go Jets, go. This is supposed to be minus 34 or something. You can barely even get it to church. If you only have electric star on your sled, I have no idea what you even do when it's this cold. Cause there's no way a battery can turn that over. Ugh. Right now, I'm not even trying to start it. I'm just breaking it. Ugh. Ugh. This is gonna be a process. Ugh. When I get this sled started, I'm gonna change my socks, all my underclothes, my hoodie, my toque, everything. Different gloves, because I'm gonna be sweating like a pig. Okay. Ugh. Oh yeah, it's loosening up. Oh yeah. Ugh. Wow, she just burped a little. I might be able to use electric start now, actually. Let's see. That was way way easier than I anticipated, actually. Okay, chopped up some sucker. If you're gonna be camped out for a long period of time, it definitely doesn't hurt to drop down some chum. The fish in this lake just cruise on flats, on edges all over the place. So you really can make any spot on the whole lake in deep water a lake trout hotspot by chumming. You can see on the aquavit here, I dropped one piece of sucker right down this hole. I drilled another hole just outside the shelter right there. I'm gonna go drop the rest of the sucker and you should be able to see it fall in the background there. Oh my goodness. There's like three trout just crushing that chum as it falls. Oh man, 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 man. Okay, this should be easy. Of course it's like noon, a shark tank below us. And we aren't even fishing yet. I'm just using a four inch jerk minnow and I'm going to put just a skin piece of sucker on there so that I do have the scent, but maybe it'll stand out from all the sucker a bit. We'll see. And down we go. Ooh, it feels like this is gonna be frustrating more than easy. Immediately, I just got that sense. Oh, is that a big fish? He's coming straight towards my jig. Oh my goodness, that was instant. <laughs> okay, not frustrating. Okay, how cool was that? We got the visibility. We got a nice medium sized trout doing battle down there. Oh, Clearwater Lake, Northern Manitoba, Evergreen Resort, and five minutes in fishing in deep water, and there are fish everywhere in this lake, except up in 18 feet of water if you're trying to sight fish. Look at them dogging down there. Oh, it's so cool. Oh, yes. 
Little tiny piece of sucker. Don't ask me why he didn't just eat a real piece of sucker instead of just a little piece of skin, but yeah, we are in the game. Okay, let's get him right back down. And there's more trout down there waiting. This is the jig I'm using. This is a quarter ounce real bait tournament flasher jig. You need the tournament series. They're really expensive, but they've got crazy strong Gamagatsu hooks on there. So it's good for trophy walleye fishing or lake trout fishing, obviously, because a quarter ounce jig doesn't have a super big hook on it, but that Gamagatsu hook is so strong. And then teamed up with a four inch Kalen's jerk minnow. Take the jig, skewer it into the nose. And I always like to go a little bit further in than I would estimate I need to. So you can see right there, I went in a little bit too far and that's why the bait's looped up. So then I can just tear that bait just a little bit and then it's sitting perfectly, which is better than not putting it in far enough and having to rip it off and then skewer it on further. A lot of the trout come up spitting up bait fish that's about that size. You could probably use a tube jig or a lot of other things. I just like the way that you can dead stick this and it'll sit horizontal in the water and we can chase fish around mid column if we see anything on the flasher and they get way bigger trophy potential everywhere on this like oh my goodness did you see that i just got back down there for the second time and i couldn't even get to bottom oh that fish came in and smoked it that was awesome oh is that ever awesome another really nice trout about the same size as the last one. This one didn't fight at all. He just came right in. Okay. Anybody having fun yet? That is crazy. We have fished for maybe two minutes with our line in the water, maybe one minute, and another beautiful clear water lake, lake trout. Awesome. And that barbless hook just fell right out. And I'm using kind of a lighter fluorocarbon than I'd usually use for lake trout. This is, I think, 12 or 14 pound test. And I just don't want like a bright cord of 20 pound fluoro sticking up off the bottom in the middle of chum pile. I want my jig to blend in a little bit if possible. And then that's only probably about five foot of fluorocarbon and then 40 pound power pro mainline, 71 HG Curado bay casting reel. Kind of a nice compromise between size for fitting in your hand and still holding a good amount of that line. And then there's a 45 inch medium heavy hot rod. Great, powerful rod. Lots of bend to hold a fish during the fight and lots of power to steer them up the hole. Water column, could we uh, just go take a look at it quick? Oh, what's this up here in the water column? Hello, yeah, come on up, gotcha. Stay sharp, stay focused, check the water column, lose the fish. Great point. I know this is totally excessive having a flasher and an underwater camera going. And I don't know what to tell you because that fish you'd never see on the underwater camera because it's halfway up, obviously. And then seeing the behavior on the underwater camera is just, it's crazy. And the other thing to think about is watch this. I got my jig sitting on the bottom and then I'm gonna lift it up. So right now I'm about eight inches off the bottom and the flasher hasn't even flickered yet. And right there, see how the flasher is just starting to flicker? So how far is that? That's how far. So what is that? You know, maybe a foot, maybe 14 inches of dead zone down there. So you cannot see a fish on the flasher if it is in the bottom 14 inches. Isn't that crazy? And the reason for that probably in this hole specifically is that big boulder off to the side is what the flasher is seeing as the bottom. This Vexlar has a nine degree transducer cone angle, which is actually very precise and really helps you with deep water fishing. If you picture if you were on the edge of a drop off or if that boulder was higher, let's say this is a drop off, this is towards the top of the water, this is towards the bottom. If you've got a wide 19 degree beam on your transducer, it'll read the bottom here. Whereas if you have a nine degree, a more precise narrower beam angle, it'll read the bottom here. It'll hit right there. Whereas if it was even narrower, it would hit here. And you can see that that dead zone gets smaller and smaller with a narrower beam. You're really only gonna see what is right on the bottom if the bottom is perfectly flat or if you're using an underwater camera and you can see the lake trout screwing around because so many of these lake trout moving around that chum pile, they won't even show up on the flasher. So you wouldn't even know if they were there. And you know, walleyes, perch, they are so commonly right on the bottom. These fish are not showing up. That one's just barely made the flasher jiggle a little bit there. You can see how the, the bottom just kind of wavered a little bit. These aren't showing up. Watch my jig come up. There's my jig. Oh, 
fish is coming up to look at it. But those fish did not show up before that. So just for something different here, I'm gonna pull up the AquaView. This is how I've been running it, kind of looking down at a 45 degree angle. And I'm just gonna adjust it to hang horizontal just to get a different perspective on things. And also it, it has a setting here you can look up 45. I don't really use that for anything. I usually use these other two settings. We're gonna try looking horizontal at the world for a little bit here. So it's definitely rocky down there. There's our rock perspective. That's the one we've been looking at. Wow, a much different perspective. And that rock is very tall. It's at least a foot high, maybe more. So we're kind of catching the edge of it or the top of it. And that's what's marking it as the bottom. So it's understandable that there'd be a dead zone. But you can see where these fish are swimming. Look, these fish, fish are swimming lower than the level of the rock. Not scared of the camera. I always thought that it, it was better high up. That's a small fish. But the, the fish swim right up to it. That's crazy. Respect the water column. Gotta always keep checking, keep checking. Doing a column climb. Should we do a column check? Check. How about a water column check? Climb the column. Ah, oh, hello there. I am Manny Miles from Mount Karangla. Today, we're gonna do a column climb. You'll watch me now. Don't try that at home. Oh, that's a big trout. Maybe not long, but did you see that belly and the lips? Biggest fish we've seen today for sure. You gotta think my camera's like eight feet from my jig and he swam between there, like no big deal. Oh, that's him again. Look at how fat he is. Wow, is he, oh my goodness. Not saying long, but very fat. And I think he just bumped the camera because the camera just did a shake. And there's a little fish darting by. There's so much going on. There's that fat giant one. Giant tail. It's tough to know. We're closer now. You know, you can picture when you're higher up at that 45, you're farther away from the jig. And then when you come down, you're actually getting closer to the jig. So we're kind of zoomed in. Oh, he came right over to me when I jigged it. He's right in it. No. He didn't get it in his mouth. Got him. <clears throat> Had to be a little bit more patient than I was before. Feels medium. This will give us a size reference. It isn't the biggest one that we've seen. Oh yeah. Ice is nicely thawed. Come up. Come up. Yeah, still medium, you know? Okay, there you go. This is a key time. Sun setting in the next maybe 20 minutes. Key feeding time. That one's behavior, you saw it. He gave me multiple chances. He wanted it. Oh my goodness. There's a trout right underneath the ice here. That is so cool. Look at this, he's right here. I don't know if you can see that. I better be still. My jig is right below the hole. That trout is right there. See? Explore the column. They can be anywhere. On the bottom, under the ice. Like that fish was touching the ice. Right there, we got a million, maybe two million candle power. And a strobe feature. It's like pitch black on the aqua view to day bright. We'll see if the lake trout care. Oh, it's the fat belly from earlier. And he doesn't care about the camera. He doesn't care about the light. Oh, come on. Come back, please. That's, I don't know if that's him. Whoever it is, he wants it. Missed it. Oh. Oh. Oh, shoot. I have the smaller fish. Oh, the bigger fish was coming in. Didn't want to set the hook. I still have the smaller fish. I guess I'm going to have to catch him. Oh! The big fish was right behind him. Shoot. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Ah, oh, the other one was the big one. I'm pretty sure. Oh, man, that's frustrating. Let's go back home, little guy. Oh, look at that shadow. That is so cool. That's the good stuff.
I have not given up completely. Whoa. 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 Whoa, that looked giant. While I'm cooking, remember Redemption Lake Trout? Last winter, cooking, caught the big one. Can it happen again? It looked like a wine barrel. It was huge. Spoon and bowl all in one and strainer. Not quite mom spaghetti. Uh oh. No, the spotlight died. The fun's over. Using a flasher is just not as exciting. Meanwhile, something up in the water column. Oh. Uh, um, high in the water column. Come on. Keep coming, come on. Oh my goodness. Oh, he's chasing me right now. He's right on me. Come on. That's what Lake Trail Fishing's all about right there. Like that is just invigorating. I have to put on music. Compared to watching fish swim around, this is level 10 boring. I gotta put on music, I'm sorry. Hate to do this to you. Oh, oh, oh. What is this? Come on, chase me. That's an engaged mark. Here we go. Here he comes. Here he comes. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This could be the moment. Oh, please be the one. Please be the one. Oh, please be the one. Oh, please be the one. It's heavy. Things are good. Oh, it's decent. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And he looks fat. Come on. Come on. So cool. Could be the biggest fish of the day. I don't think it's a trophy, but I bet you it's... Come on, buddy. Come on. Oh, yeah! How pretty is he? Clearwater Lake Lake Trout. This is why we didn't go in yet, right here. <sighs> Same jig all day long. Well, I'm done. No trophy lake trout for me today. Definitely a letdown when you're on a lake, like Clearwater or any of the other trophy lakes around here. But I saw a trophy lake trout on the camera. I caught lots of lake trout. I had an awesome day. I'll be back to Evergreen over and over and over again. Manitoba, Canada's heart beats. That's how it's done, folks. See you soon.